Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got uh, one system from the user, they just named, their name's just T in Discord, but on uh, the workshop they're named uh, Topsy, so a massive thank you to them for sending their system in. And without further ado, let's get straight into this. Their system is called the Teleria system. So I've already installed it, it should be here. There it is. Okay, what do we got? Let's have a look-see. Right. Okay, so we'll head back to that once we get to it. So the star, we should always start with the star. Let's go over there. Right, so... This star is about 1 billion years old. It is an A-type star and spins rapidly similar to Ulta. Uh, so the cloud the system was born in is rich in resources like water, cobalt and more. It has 12 planets and one small star orbit in it. Please note the system is stable and you're welcome to press play. Oh, we like stable systems. Oh yeah, that's cool. Four bits labels. Play. Yeah, there we go. Always like, always like stable systems. That's the way I always build mine. So you can actually run them. Right. So first of the planets. It's not often we do these when we're playing them actually. But here it is. Let's go to we'll go to I guess we'll go to realistic lighting. There you go. Very nice. So the first of the worlds. Turn off the zone as well. Cool. So Villad. This is the innermost planet to Tellurus, and this is purple. It's tidy locked and has some bright spots uh, which are made of bands of cobalt. One side it is red because of a large impact. Very cool. Let's look on the other side then. Oh yes, you got more purple. Hey, very cool. Nice. Okay. Next up, we've got Comberclop. Uh, where are we? That is here. Slow down time. Spinning pretty quick, isn't it? It's got something orbiting very fast. Couple of hours going around there. Okay, so this world here. This is the largest rocky planet of the system and has a pink surface with a large atmosphere. It is a mostly desert with purple dust scattered in the atmosphere. Cool. It's also got one little asteroid as well. Captured asteroid. Highly inclined and tidally locked. There it is. Cool. That thing spins around the parent really fast as well. Nice. Next up we've got the Clothed. Be clothed. Uh, this planet is a rocky um, and has a thin atmosphere. It's rich in minerals such as iron and gold. The main points of interest are its poles, where there are small oceans with no life due to being close to boiling. So if you look carefully, you can see them there. We'll go just go on there, make it a little bigger. You can see the water there. North and south has them. Very nice. So it is at 140 degrees, so the water that's the only place you could really be. I mean, if we look here. Even the colder zones. I mean, the water be yeah. The, the the temperature at the poles is about fourteen and increasing. So yeah, not too bad. Could be worse. <laughs> uh, next up, we got this one. Lormival. Ooh, this one's spinning. This, this one's spinning very fast. We're only running an hour. Rotation period uh, one point one five days. Feels like it's spinning really quick. <laughs> there we go. Trying about twenty minutes there. I really like the surface as It looks pretty wild. Right. The planet is mostly oceanic um, and has a large mountain range going across the equator, separating its oceans in two halves. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, it has a small single cellular life in its oceans. Nice. That's a really unique design like that with a massive round team. That is so weird how that's designed. Very cool. Do like that. That is really, really cool. Sweet. Okay, next up. Pelic. Perlic. That is a great looking world as well. I really like the atmosphere colour with that. This planet is Hadpool and has similar life, very similar to humans. They are currently making their first sets to send probes and orbiters to the other planets of the system. It has large temperature variations between heights and the inhabitants evolved to endure. That is a great looking Earth like world there. It doesn't have the blue atmosphere, it has very deep um, oceans as well. I actually originally thought that the, uh, the land was actually the darker blue and the oceans were the light blue at first but yeah that is a that's a cool looking world i like that nice it's got a mars texture as well you can see it's got the volcano showing up as well very nice cool large temperature variations between heights and how to enjoy yeah okay 
Uh, the moon, mostly white with lower elevations, having large quantities of phosphorus within. This moon was captured and has a large inclination, making eclipses rare. Ah, okay. There you go. So moving on. Taking a bit. So we got this one here. Paper. This is a gas dwarf that is rather close to its star. Its rotation is very inclined, leading to it rotate to its poles all around the planet. Um, as if they were at the equator, as one captured moons. One captured moon, I should say. There it is. This is the moon. It's highly inclined due to being a captured dwarf planet. Some of its parts are red due to iron oxide. Nice. So you can see that one's tilted very easy there. Next up, we are going to... Chi. When the system was younger and far hotter, Chi had liquid oceans. As it cooled down, the oceans froze but aren't swept away by solar radiation due to its magnetosphere. Parts of the surface that aren't frozen over is rocky. Cool. So we've got Crake over here, the moon. It was formed from a collision with uh, Chai. Um and end up with more water. This water froze um, all of its surface with only the highest part showing through. Okay, cool, cool. Next up we got Tosplan. Big jump now, right. So what is going on over here? Got a big load of, uh, looks like there's two objects. I like how the trail goes from blue to pink there, but it's obviously two objects that are mixed in there, yeah. Right, so Tosplan, what is this? A lot of action going on here, a lot of debris, massive ring system spiraled out of control there material everywhere so this is where we started actually that looks like my realistic um looks quite similar to my realistic ice giant i made um in the previous video that came out if i'm releasing this in the right order <laughs> right so very interesting so tospan this is a gas dwarf in the binary of another planet called uh, Tronia. It has oceans inside its layers of gas and in, obtained rings after a captured dwarf planet flew too close and thus formed a disk around the two planets. It has two moons. Those moons are probably causing the material to get sprung out everywhere as well. Telop. This is the innermost moon of Tospan and has much tidal heating. However, due to its parent planet being small, this doesn't cause volcanoes. It has a thin atmosphere and a very desert-like. Okay. Got the little clips going past there. It's always cool having it run. It's not often we get a run the simulation we're doing, and that is a very strange crater. The outermost moon and once has a devastating impact, making its rocky surface very layered. It is rich in ions and minerals. It's inclined due to gravitational interactions. Okay. So next up, we've got the planet they're in a binary with. But yeah, those moons are definitely going to cause those rings to go all over the place, as we see. So over here, the pink one. So it's got one moon as well. We'll go from the moon's perspective here. Very nice. Looks like a road protection it's got going on there. Okay. So, this gas dwarf is in a binary with Tospan and orbits it about once a year. Um, it was Mum Moon and has rings before the planet mentioned Shredded Dwarf Planet. Okay. Um, so, Tigig, this is the icy moon of uh, Tronia and it's mostly made of ice due to no other moons orbiting it. It has been allowed to freeze with no tidal heating. Okay. Cool. I really like how those two trail colours are like mixed in there. That's really cool. Right, next up we have got Sala. Sala. Another gas giant. Got the clips going on right now as well. So, this is a blue and orange gas giant. It has no magnetic sphere. This is because of having barely any iron in its core, causing the dino to shut down shortly after formation. It has three moons. So we've got Rig. It's the closest moon of solar and orbits extremely close to its parent planet. It has oceans of magma from volcanic activity and islands of ash and soot. In about a billion years, it will be ripped into a massive ring. Oof. Oh, man. Right, next up we've got um, Ernon. It's the second closest moon of solar and has a thick blue atmosphere and ice covering the whole surface. It has its own magnetosphere to protect itself from solar winds. Very nice. And the last moon over here... Mernom Onus. It's the furthest moon from Sulla and is mainly covered in massive layers of cobalt. It reaches kilometres deep and is thought to go down into its mantle, so that's very material heavy there. Whoa. Okay. 
So bow tied next up. So it's an ice giant. So we can a big jump out to here. Nice pink and purple kind of looking, uh, or more pinky and white shade actually. Um, and it has bands, some of which are made from iodine vapors. It is assumed to have been scattered inwards by a dominant gas giant uh, at some point in its history. So next up we've got Kruffle. Kruffle. Uh, this world is very tidally heated due to its mass and eccentric and close orbit. It has pools of magma under its crust and it erupts violently. So there's your Io Triton kind of world being upset by the gravity being close by. Cool, cool. Then we've got a Blue Say. This world has cobalt dust all over its surface due to a cobalt rich proton moon smashing into it during formation. So remember, he did say this system had very rich cobalt areas. Pretty cool due to the cloud this system was formed in. Next up, we've got Marat. This moon has a very strong greenhouse effect that heats it up and here in into the positive degrees. It is grey because of the atmosphere being full of silica sand. Nice. And lastly, we've got Odyssey. This moon has crystallized iodine all over its surface. It's great as a field of ice. Cool. So next up we've got Springus, the dominant gas giant of the system in five Jupiter masses. We're taking a big jump out to here. Okay, right. Pretty spooky looking, okay. Still got a lot to go here, actually. Right, um... The dominant gas giant, total of five Jupiter masses, has a huge influence on the system and has five moons. It is black and white due to the bands being made of calcium and carbon. Okay. Next up we have got... Let's go in all this. Um, Foom. This moon is ravaged by tidal heating due to being close to its parent planet. And volcanoes constantly erupt, spewing magma onto its surface. Speed up time a bit more. Cool. Next up we've got this one. Alombi. This moon is uh, made up of ice and cobalt. It has very large, being half the mass of Mars. However, it isn't the biggest moon in the system, as you will see shortly. Okay. So next up, we have got uh, Lepto. This is the largest moon in the system, despite being almost uh, twice the mass of Mars. It has a small atmosphere. However, it is not tall enough to protect the peaks from solar radiation, leading to them being magenta. Cool. So next up, we've got Dol. And just actually, before we move on, just notice that massive purple zone there. That's pretty cool. It's getting pretty dark out here. I'm going to have to go on to um, directional here. There you go. A dull grey moon with one interesting feature being large equatorial canyon stretching across the equator of the surface. Cool. I think that's this zone here, I want to say. Next up, we've got Yellow. This moon is covered in sulfur, making it yellow. So there's your IO kind of light world. However, due to its far distance of planet, it has no volcanoes renewing its surface. It is instead renewed by its tectonic plates, which have not cooled down yet and stopped due to unknown reasons. Ooh, okay. Right, so we're almost at the end of this now. Can't scroll in any more on the description there. Okay, so where are we heading next? So I think we're going to a rosette. A small dwarf planet is heavily influenced by Springer's gravity. Not much can be said about it apart from it being formed in the um, in outer in the system before being pulled inwards. It's got a very interesting colour theme. Right, now we're taking a jump out to Burnak. K-type stars. We're taking a big jump now over here. Second star in the system. So back in the warmth. Um, K types are that form of long and tongues. All the outer planets have been pulled away, leaving just four. So we've got Strio, the innermost planet being hot, dark and hot. It is tidally locked and has all volatile stripped from its surface. Go back to uh, realistic lighting as well. There you go. That's more like it. Cool. Next up, we have got Avro. Oh, I do like the atmosphere colour on that blender with the star colour. This world has a strong greenhouse effect blocking view of the surface. There are no clouds because it has no water vapour. But we're looking underneath now. There you go. It does have clouds. They're there. You can see them. <laughs> right. Uh, there we are. You can't see them from up here, obviously. Um, 
And then we've got Ombleen. The inhabitants of Pelic believe this world may have life. However, they are mistaken, as this world is frozen with no water to speak of, only ice. This world has no life. But effectively, if it does have ice, then maybe in the future. You never know. But there you go. And then lastly, we have Ro. This is a dark world with most of its surface being black or being back with only some parts being a dark shade of purple. It has icy poles. That is a very cool looking planet actually. I really like the colour theme on that. Very, very dark, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Purple blends really nice with those dark, those black shades. Actually, those are really good. Right. Nice. Hope you enjoyed. I did indeed. There we go. So, line them all up. And we'll uh, finish this up. So, there it is. Dominant gas giant's huge, isn't it? Right. There's a lot of gas wells in here, as you can see. Cool. I think this is my favourite. I really did like that one there. Oh, hang on. No, that wasn't it, actually. Which one was it? It was one of the planets. Uh, I think it was this one. Yeah, this one. I like that one. That's cool. But yeah, there we are, guys. So that does it for this system. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system for sending this in. So their name was uh, Topsy. So a massive thank you to them. Really enjoyed that. And yeah, if you guys did too, make sure to press that like button. Subscribe for more. Helps on the journey to 40,000 subscribers. And yeah, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.